I feel bad that Cinnabar feels bad that they don't feel bad about using Fos as a scapegoat. We are on the cusp of another division of the gems like with the moon arc, and the focal point is of course because of Fos. Ichikawa set up the moon betrayal downright exquisitely, and I believe that Fos's installment process will be completed at the end of chapter 99, so we have a few chapters to figure out the biggest question going through each of the former illustrious and ask them, who will save Fos? There'll be a template for this tier list linked in the description down below so you can make your own version, uh, and then you can add me at any of my social media, it's the same username with it so I can see your pick. The ones that I thought would help Fos were the ones that didn't feel anything. And on a second pass through the chapter, it's actually quite understandable. Yes, you guys were cooking me through my live stream, uh, not being able to recognize any of the new Lunarian gems. And uh, you know, it, it is what it is. If you miss it, chapter 96 live stream is at the bottom of my channel page. Come through for chapter 97's live stream on July 25th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Antarctosite is the one that should shocked the most amount of people, and to be fair, me as well. But that is because of where 95 ended and the amount of time that it took for 96 to come back. Ant Art asked about Fos because they were the last person they remembered before abduction. Everything else other than that instance of Ant Art is a delusion casted by Fos' guilt, and these delusions ended up coming true, as Ant Art doesn't care at all about Fos and probably didn't wish for them to be here on the moon with them, because Fos would remind Ant Art of their incompetence to care for another. But the fact that Antark is able to hold hands with someone else is only because Fos's wish to change and not be the first to sleep during winter. It's safe to say that Antark will not be helping Fos in any way in the future chapters. On the other hand, Ghost goes the complete opposite route while still using Fos as a filler for their real goal. With Antark, it was Sensei and the feeling of connectedness with something else because of, you know, their stature and how liquid they are and only solid in in, uh, in winter time, while with Ghost, they just want Lapis back. Ghost saw Lapis in Fos before Lapis became part of Fos and decided to give them all their trust, but now that Lapis couldn't be revived, which is most likely a lie of some sort, but Ghost being the passive observer they are won't go out of their way to find the truth. They no longer have uh, the Cairngorm inside of them to use as an excuse to act impulsively. Ghost will probably do anything and everything to get Lapis back, so they're most likely going to help Fos out in the coming chapters. Euclid once again is in the middle of the pack for me. I love the amount of screen time they got and I don't really have anything new to add but I will link Cody's thread chapter 96 and more specifically Euclid as a Lunarian. Cody believes that Euclid will not help Fos at all and I'm still in the middle ground but we will see if they continue to get this screen time in the later chapters. Yellow. Poor little old yellow. The troubles never end even as a Lunarian and introspection takes on the form of dementia even if their wish to see their partners again was granted. This idea that the fulfillment of a wish never reflects in happiness because of the state of the wish bearer is not the same as when they receive the gift of their goal. What is really clever with Ichikawa's play here with Yellow is that this writes off five characters straight from the story completely while potentially giving one motivation to gain spotlight. The lunar gems are hard to distinguish to begin with, but these partners we have never seen in our story to begin with outside of one panel. With an oversaturated cast to begin with, Ichikawa makes a perfect statement to sideline them immediately while ending Yellow's story along it. End with the old and in with the new. Yellow will not be participating in any scheming in the coming chapters. On the other hand, Zircon is placed in this potential position where they can take action for two reasons. Seeing Yellow's demise and them not being involved with assisting uh, the elderly is a little odd to me. You could argue that their attachment to Yellow has waned due to Fo's partnering with Bort and then in turn Bort partnering with Zircon, but the core motivation for Zircon during that new pairing was to become strong enough to protect Yellow like Bort protects Diamond. With no sight of Zircon in this chapter that I could notice of, it kind of sets him up to potentially make some big moves in chapter 97 and onwards. Diamond does not give a single care for foes. They are still obsessed with Bort, and they have this luster that none of the other lunar gems possess. The paneling for Bort and Diamond's interaction was beautifully done, and I can elaborate on that in a later video, but it is just wow. Diamond only got warped into assisting foes in the invasion because of foes' cold trick to bring Bort up, one of complacency that has turned into an addiction for Bort's attention. Diamond will not help foes in any way because Bort is 
is at arm's reach and truly equal to diamond now. Bort was uh, originally on the maybe category because of their cold reaction to diamond and I'm leaning more to an indifferent at this moment because of a very simple reason. Bort just doesn't care at all about anything except um, if they got jellyfish in the moon or the earth, that's all that matters to them. It's interesting that these jellyfish look like the upgraded versions of what Enma calls humans floating around that makes folks sick in the stomach. They are a breeder these days and that hasn't changed no matter how many years has passed. Once the anchor to the brute strength of the illustrious, but peace changes people. And I don't really see anything spurring Bort to get swayed one way or the other in the future. Jade was another one that I thought would care just a little bit more because of their fight against Fos in the 90s, but damn, it hurt to hear them say that they understood the pain that Fos was going through. But since they're so happy, it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. It's really disheartening, but genuinely a human feeling to have. To keep those that aren't close, or even people that are close to be honest at arm's length because it's just easier that way. A scapegoat is formed to gain inner peace, but is that true, pure, or tainted happiness? Jade didn't get to hear Fos out sooner and now at this point, even if they wanted to, it's just like, it's too late. Very similar to Euclid. While Euclid uses their words to create distance, Jade was forced to use their strength to create this eventual distance with Fos, and Jade will not be helping Fos in the remaining chapters. Cinnabar's kind of uh, attitude doesn't actually hurt as much as I thought it would. The loneliness lingers whether they are alone on earth or surrounded by others on the moon because they've always gazed into the thing that they aren't a part of. It's never a matter of longing as if you remember that Cinnabar chose the nighttime as their prison and then was subsequently confined to it by society, not the other way around. On the moon they chose to confine themselves to work as a means to keep themselves occupied because when they get even a bit of free time they think back to the past and that necessarily nostalgia creeps in. Instead of looking at the moon, they stare at the earth thinking about the one who saved them from their jail, the cost of everything for Foth. Cinnabar will not be helping Foth in the future chapters. Speaking of nostalgia, Benito makes a very interesting remark about the cookies with the fillings and how it reminds them of something, themselves in their former stature. The one who felt the most average on earth that fled to the moon to become special ends up becoming the same as others, but does that not set them back right back to their original feeling they felt on the earth? Or is it because the entire playing field is leveled out with all the gems that those feelings aren't even relevant anymore? It could go either way. Um, so I. I do hope that we get more Benito content soon. Pad Paracha is tricky. I really can't tell if they're just being moody or absent-minded. The thing with Pad is that they're intelligent, but intelligent gems basically get nerfed by Ichikawa with some form of condition. As a lunar gem, Pad has too much time thinking because they've been awake at least double the time that they weren't awake back on Earth. So what are they even thinking about? I'm leaning towards Pad and Ghost as the biggest factors in helping Fos out because of this, and uh, I'm super excited to see if it eventually leads somewhere. Rutil, on the other hand, <laughs> I mean, they seem to have just accepted the distance between them and Pad, and it's still a really delicate situation that is filled with this obsessive addiction to the same level as Daya and Bort. And we can see that tension in this chapter, just like with Bort and Daya's moment. But this is way past the point of reconciliation with Fos, and they're not going to assist Pad at any point in the future. Alex has found peace uh, cooking up some really good looking food. I'm sure they had a part in those delicious looking crepes uh, for the cover page of chapter 96 that were themed after the gems, and they already gave their assistance to Fos earlier, so there's no need for them to do it once again. And do I even need to mention uh, where Walgato will fall? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Lapis, though, is a hard no as well. Hear me out. I'm filled with copium right now because Lapis's referential subtext is just too much to chew on. Like, on oh god, I want Lapis to really exist in the story again. The running theory is that Lapis's body will be attached to Fos's head or something along that way. Way, or it will be like a Lapis Fos amalgamation body with Fos's head and Fos's uh, hallucinations leading up to Congo breaking might actually become a reality as well, which would be insane to think about. But Lapis's curiosity will manifest in a way that will not complement with Fos. I believe so. Uh, I do think that they will interfere and not help Fos at all. This is different from a Lapis hallucination coming from Fos's memory trip that they're potentially going on right now. Two completely separate hallucination Lapises. 
Um, that Lapis, uh, I don't know what they'll do, but I do believe there'll be a pair of Phoses and a pair of Lapises in the story soon. Ghosh uh, is a wild card. I don't really have anything uh, other than they're just they're just here for the vibe, so they'll probably follow Pad if Pad decides to make a move. Amethyst uh, twins, I don't really know yet. They're in the middle for me since they could go uh, to either spectrums of the Phos helping role uh, since things I didn't really feel any kind of animosity between or tension uh, between the twins yet so who knows and what about the uh, other gems uh, I don't really have anything to remark about them yet as future chapters come out this running thoughts will shift accordingly of course I have to mention that I could be completely wrong next chapter uh, and we could get folks just pulling up and praying everyone away I have no idea what Ichikawa is cooking but let's see how 97 treats us and that's the thing about these like these specific types of theory videos like they are not relevant as the next chapter comes in but that's what i got so i will see you guys in the next one sorry for the delay i was out of town uh but yeah peace